Hello again, everyone. Today I'm going to show you how you can build a customer service bot that can talk to the customer using the WhatsApp channel. So imagine there's a company called Contoso Electronics and they sell calculators and they have launched a WhatsApp AI bot where customers can come in and talk to that bot if they have any issue with their calculator. So the bot has access to the troubleshooting guide, meaning the bot knows what are the different error codes that can happen to their calculators and then also knows the troubleshooting steps. So let's see that in action. I will escape from my PowerPoint and I will start projecting my phone on the screen because I have to show you a WhatsApp conversation. OK. Let me move to my WhatsApp app. You can see my phone here. So. I come to the Contoso Electronics WhatsApp account and message hi. Say something. No. OK, there it is. <laughs> All right, the bot says, hello, how can I assist you today? Do you need help with your calculator? Uh, yes. Give me a sec. I'm checking the code. Of course, take your time. Let me know the error code. So let's say my calculator is displaying 1002, which is a regular number, but let's say it's an error code. All right, here you see a big blurb of what the error is and how to resolve it. Now, I also want to show you what if I ask the uh, bot something which it is not aware of, like a random error code, which it is not supposed to understand. Sorry, actually, the error code is just, just some random number. OK, so you get a message that says, I do not know how to fix this one. Please call customer service. So. That was the demo. Now let's go to the PowerPoint PowerPoint slide and let's talk about how that was built. All right, so this demo uses two main components, Azure OpenAI service, which gives us access to the LLM models like GPT models, which enable our bot to talk uh, to the customer in natural language, very human-like. And then I've used Azure Communication Services, which is Microsoft CPaaS, uh, that is communication platform as a service, which offers APIs to developers to add communication channels and communication capabilities into your application. Just like here, I added the WhatsApp channel into my app using ACS. So what are the scenarios where you'll build something like this? So what you saw was a very simple uh, you know, application of uh, AI bot on WhatsApp. But if you were to take this into production, there are so many other scenarios that this could be very helpful. Uh, one is order inquiries where a customer is asking their retail uh, service provider, what is my order status? I want to cancel an order. When would I get my package and so on? And other thing is appointment queries. Like, Usually we have to call a reception or a front desk to manage our appointments. How cool would it be if we could do that through channels that we prefer using like SMS or WhatsApp and an AI bot could help us reschedule an appointment or get a new appointment or cancel an appointment. And the third category could be product support. We saw one example where the bot is connected to the knowledge base. It could be the website, it could be uh, the SharePoint documents on SharePoint, or it could be a database which has, you know, the common um, errors and troubleshooting guides. So a bot can help users with product support. And another example is booking and shopping assistance. And the core of this is that we want to use as businesses the channel that the user preferred. 
So today, a lot of these things are possible through, you know, chat interface on the website or by picking up the phone or calling the business. But we're seeing that our users or our customers are using different channels across different geographies, right? In India, for example, WhatsApp is used heavily and even in some parts of Europe. Uh, in US, SMS or iMessage is used heavily. So basically, the core of this is that if you want to meet your customers where they are, to the preferred channel that they use, then we have a lot of options to add different communication channels on top of the AI applications or the business applications that you're building. So let's see the architecture diagram. Uh, do you want me to zoom in into this a bit or this is fine, the font size? Uh, I think it's fine. We'll, we'll do a bit of zooming in the post editing. So this would be good, yep. Okay, okay. I did what I, what I could fit on the screen. Um, sure. All right, so uh, the user, which was me, and I was using my WhatsApp client, is talking through WhatsApp messages, and those messages are going to ACS messaging service, which is Azure Communication Service. Now, Azure Communication Service is brokering this conversation between WhatsApp uh, business account and the user. And when the ACS messaging service gets a message on your WhatsApp business account, it passes to uh, it passes that notification to your application, which is the backend application that you would write as a developer. And this application then takes that input, uses a system prompt, and we are going to talk about the system prompt in just a second. It uses that system prompt, which basically is telling the GPT model, how do you have to behave? And the conversation history, which is very important when building any AI application. Because your LLM needs to have the full context, they need to have the full chat history. They need to have the first message of the customer, the response of the bot, the second message of the customer, the response of the bot, so that they have the full context of the conversation. So your application will take the system prompt, the conversation history, and pass it to the LLM model. I have used Azure OpenAI service here, and then the, um, the LLM model will respond, and that response will be passed back again through ACS messaging service to the client. Um, I've added Azure AI search index here to indicate that if you were to build something like this in production, you would use uh, something like Azure AI search index to index your knowledge base. I'll show you in my demo, I have used the prompt itself to pass the knowledge base to LLM, but you would ideally want to use something like Azure AI search if you were to bring this into production and index all of your documents in something like Azure AI service. All right, so what are the steps for doing this? So there are four easy steps to add the AI logic. Uh, one is to create an Azure OpenAI resource on the Azure portal. Second is to create an AI model deployment in the, sorry. Second is to create an AI model deployment in Azure AI Studio. Then you write and test a system prompt and you pass the system prompt. So let's see that in action real quick. So everything will start from the Azure portal. You will come here and you will create an Azure AI service resource. So I have that created. In Azure OpenAI service, you can see that I have two resources created. I can open one of them for you. Here you'll go to model deployments. Now model deployments is something that happens in the Azure OpenAI Studio. So you can open that from the Azure portal itself. And here you see I have three deployments. So deployment here means that what is the model that you want to use, which LLM model? You can use GPT-35 Turbo. It works really well for the kind of application that I built, or you could use the uh, latest GPT-40 model. It's totally up to you. Now, after that, you will go to the chat playground. This is where you'll experiment with your prompt. This is where you'll refine your prompt. So this is the prompt that I had for my application. It says that you are Contoso Electronics AI customer service assistant and so on, and there are some instructions for it to be friendly. And here you can see I've passed the knowledge base in the prompt itself because I had just like four to five error codes to just build the proof of concept. So coming back here, you will paste the prompt and click apply, and then you can have the similar conversation that I was having on WhatsApp. Um, 
in this chat playground and you can define your prompt as needed. And if you wanted to use Azure AI search to add the data that I added in the prompt as a uh, as a proper data source, you could do that from Azure OpenAI Studio itself. There are a bunch of options, Azure AI search, blob storage, Cosmos DB, and so on. We'll not go there because that's not the scope of my demo today, but I just wanted to show you this view as well so that you know where to go if you want to do something like this. Now, once that is done, we'll go back to the code, but We'll go there in a bit because I also want to show you the, the steps that are needed for the WhatsApp channel integration. And then from there, after we have done everything in the Azure portal, we go to the code. So for adding a WhatsApp channel, there are five steps. Again, you go to the portal, you do some magic there, and uh, you connect your WhatsApp business account to your Azure resource, and then you write code to handle the notifications. So, again, going back to the Azure portal. So here you will now search for communication service, which is basically the ACS resource. I have one of us created, so we look at that. Here, because we are talking about WhatsApp, you will straight go to advanced messaging, and then you will go to channels. Channels is where you connect your WhatsApp business account to Azure. I have one already created, but if you were to create a new one, you'll go to connect and you'll do all the steps from the portal itself. Now, WhatsApp is managed by Meta, so you might already have a WhatsApp business account on the Meta platform. If not, you can do that from here itself, from the portal. All you need is a business. And if you don't have a business like I don't, I work for Microsoft, I don't have my own business, you can use a hack. Like I used the Facebook business page that I had as my business website and everything worked fine. Or you could use a link to a blog that you have or your Instagram page profile as the business website. And that's all you need to create a WhatsApp business account. So um, all the steps are here. You can actually use ACS number or you can use your existing number and connect it to your WhatsApp business account. I used my existing number, but if you don't want to use that, it's very easy to get a phone number on the portal itself. So this takes a couple of minutes. There are a lot of uh, steps, so we won't go through that uh, today, but you know where to go if you need to proceed uh, with WhatsApp business account and connecting it with Azure portal. So once that is done, your setup in Azure portal is complete. So you'll come to the code, and this is a repo that I've shared the link in my slides. I'll also drop in the chat. The webhook controller is the class which is interesting to you. So there are four main functions here. One is handle grid events. Now, this is the me method which receives the notification from ACS when a message is received. So here you check if the receive message is advanced message received. If yes, then you do all the AI magic and you send back the response. So there's a method called respond to customer async. This is where you're generating the AI response. And then you are sending WhatsApp message. So for generating the AI response, there are just four lines of code. You are using Azure OpenAI client and you are using complete chat async method and you're passing the chat messages. Now this chat messages is a combination of system prompt and the conversation history like I mentioned. And the last method here is send WhatsApp message async. Now again, this is just three lines of code. You create a notification client and then you send the response. So this is it. This You have 175 lines of code for uh, building something like this. And once you are done with your code and you've deployed your application on Azure or on your local, there's one last step that you'll do. You will come back to your uh, resource and you have to connect your resource to your application so that the resource knows where to send the notification when a, a message is received. You can see that um, I do have a webhook created for my local sample and for the deployed sample so that when I'm testing, I can get the notification on my local server, otherwise uh, on my deployed server. So it's very easy. You come to the event in your resource, you create an event subscription, and you can give any name, 
The main thing is that the kind of event that you select is advanced message received, meaning WhatsApp message received. And then you select webhook. You will configure an endpoint. This will be your server URL and you will add webhook. So the good part is you don't have to remember all of this that I said because everything is there in the readme. So with that, I am through with my uh, through with my sample. And this is the code repo link, ak.ms WhatsApp rag. And I can I want to talk about pricing, but I think I'm already through with my time. I can talk about it in the chat. Uh, but this is the code repo. Do check it out and leave any comments or suggestions that you may have. So thank you for listening. And Vesa and David, I am through. Thank you for having me. Thank you.